This is chapter 8 practice exam number 11. So we've got this dude sitting on the beam. That's from clip art, by the way. I just thought it looked hilarious. That's why. Some of you asked, why is he sitting on the beam? Like, why not? He's chilling. Okay. Anyway, he's sitting on this beam. Um, I just want to find the tension in each chord. Now, this the reason this wall is here is just so that this beam can, like, hit it to go into the left so there's a normal force on it to the right but we actually won't need that so just forget about it it is frictionless so it's not it's not holding the beam up at all okay now i don't want to redraw this thing so we're just gonna like put it off to the side eh, i want to make it bigger zoom zoom okay that didn't zoom much at all how do i okay fine that's enough okay so the thing about this is, if he's just sitting there, it's at equilibrium. So, what should be true is that the net force in the x and y direction should be zero. Now, in this case, I'm only going to care about y. And the net torque should be zero. But let's look at net force in the y direction first. So, if I were to draw a free body diagram of this bar, what I've got on it is I've got T1 like this and it's making an angle of 60 degrees. T2 is right straight up. I've got this dude, his weight pulling down on it. He has a mass of seven, I think it was 75. Yep, 75. So his weight is 75 times 9.8, 735, oops. Okay. I've also got the weight of the beam itself. Oi. Oi. Okay. Um, the beam itself is 100 kilograms. So that's supposed to be straight down. Sorry, I'm like slanting. I don't even know why. The weight of the beam itself is going to be 9.8 times 100 or 980 newtons. Okay. Um, from here to here. Well, this says that the whole thing is 8, and this is 5, so this must be 3 meters. And from the end to the middle is half of 8, or 4 meters. And then all the way to the end is, is 8 meters. Oi, oi. Okay. Okay, okay. Well, those distances don't matter for net force. Um, net force is simply going to be all the forces up so I've got T2 plus T1 but only the y coordinate the y component of that so sine 60 and then minus everything that's down that'd be 735 and 980 that should equal 0 okay um, I'm just gonna leave that for now oh, actually I'm gonna put those two together so what I have is T2 plus T1 oops I forgot to put a 1 on that one sine 60 um, basically equals, I'm going to move these two to the other side, um, 1715. Okay, so there's an equation. Now we do another equation. Net torque should be zero as well. So in this one, I have to choose a pivot. Um, I am going to choose this is my pivot so that the thing with the angle in it can go away. So what I have is the net torque, it's going to be um, T1 times the distance to the pivot, which is 0, sine 60. So that term is going to be gone. Okay. Now I'm just going to, I'm just going to work my way across the beam. So I've got a force of 735 that on its own would make this thing swing like this, which is clockwise, that's negative. So minus the force times its distance from the pivot was 3 meters. And it makes an angle of 90 degrees, so sine of 90 is 1. I'm going to leave that off. This one also would cause a negative torque, so its force times its distance from the pivot. Okay, T2 would make this thing swing counterclockwise, which is positive, so plus its force times its distance from the pivot, again, right angle, 
so I don't have to worry about that. That should equal zero. Okay. Well, okay, that's zero. I don't care about that. Um, oh yeah, I really should be writing that for any torque, it's force times distance from the pivot um, sine theta. So we'll probably put a point in for that somewhere. So let's write that one out. It's on your equation sheet. Basically, if it's on your equation sheet, we're kind of expecting you to write it down without putting things in it first. So that means the only thing that's not that I don't know is T2. I can just solve this straight up for T2. So I'm going to multiply these out. I'm going to move them to the other side. I'm going to divide by 8. And I end up with T2 is... 766 newtons. Okay, then I go up here and put that in here. And then the only thing that's missing is T1. So I'm going to put 766 in here. I'm going to subtract it from this side. I'm going to divide by sine 60 on both sides. And I will end up with T1. And I end up with T1 is rounded to three sig figs, it's 1050 newtons. Okay, so let's talk about points. There's not a whole lot here, not really. So let's do one for each answer. Let's do one for both units being correct, so they, they both have to be correct to get that unit, that point, sorry, that point. Um, one for stating that the net force is going to be zero, one for stating that the net torque is going to be zero, one for stating the equation for a torque, any torque. Okay, that is one, two, three, four, five, six. Now this one's, the next one I want to do is kind of weird. I want a point for pairing the correct distance with the correct force. Now, you might not have used a different pivot for me. Basically, as long as your distance matches the distance from your pivot, um, you're going to get these points. So there's one for this force, one for this, one for this, and there I should do one for this as well, but most people just leave it off. So I'm going to do the last point that there's a sign of 60 attached to the T1 up in the um, in the net force equation. Okay. Okay, that should be 10. 